Hello, uh, my name is Caroline, and today I'm presenting our paper, Crafting Critical Heritage Discourses uh, into Interactive Exhibition Design. And so we present an example of research through design that shows how practice and heritage-based theory can mutually inform each other in a positive way. So there has been a divide between research and practice, and this is problematic because researcher and practitioners tend to work alongside each other, not being in touch or informed by each other's work. And there is little research that shows how the two can mutually inform each other. And by taking a research through design approach, we believe that we can improve this divide and show that theory and practice can mutually influence each other in a positive way. In our case, we articulate the process where uh, heritage-based theory has informed our practice of designing interactive exhibition in museum. We show how arguments from critical heritage discourses have trickled down into our design. We then show how the richness of our design process and from our practice has bubbled up to inform back the academic community and potentially to start a new cycle. So we've co-designed an interactive exhibition with the community of museum volunteers at the Bishop's House Museum in Sheffield in the UK. And so the Bishop's House is a rare example of Tudor building. It was built in the 1500s and it was inhabited for more than 500 years. And the last residence uh, of Bishop's House left uh, in the 1970s, when it was then turned into a museum of local histories. And 10 years ago, the house was saved from closure by the local community, who are now a group of museum volunteers who are keeping the place open to the public, mostly at weekends. And so today, if you come to Bishop's House, you will see um, an old and beautiful building and mostly learn about the Tudors. But Bishop's House uh, is more than a Tudor house. It's a real time capsule. It has 500 years of histories as it was someone's house across the centuries. And as in many other house museums, the museum volunteers are the gatekeeper and the storytellers of the many stories and anecdotes of the place. So we've co-designed with the volunteers a series of interactive exhibitions of, at the Bishop's House to explore the temporality of the place. We co-created characters and narratives to imagine uh, how life at the house was in, the different, uh, in different times across the five centuries. And those stories were informed by the museum collection, but also by what volunteers knew about the place and what they wanted to tell visitors about. And so the exhibition, Curious House, Meet Characters, Brings Bishop's House to Life, was designed around five characters that emerged from the work we did with the volunteers. And to give you an idea, here is Mary, who represents one of the first inhabitants of the house. And the volunteers imagined uh, about her story, how she would have spent her day doing an embroidery next to the fire. Here is Anne, and uh, she represented the most recent characters who lived in Bishop's house until the early 1970s. Her story was inspired by archive materials like photographs, and volunteers imagined how she might have spent her day um, in the living room watching the, the moon landing on TV with her family. And so inspired by the characters' stories, we've developed uh, augmented objects that were associated with each character. So here we have, for example, a magazine uh, for Anne that pictured on the front cover the moon landing. And for Mary, we had an embroidery. And so those objects uh, were used in the exhibition to unlock content from the characters. And in the house, uh, the characters manifested through a group of five digitally augmented tableau. So those were displayed on the two floors of the bishop's house, and they were brought to life by visitors who used augmented objects to unlock content from the tableau and to hear what the characters had to say. And so when entering the house, visitors choose uh, one of five objects. And depending on which object they chosen, uh, they could trigger different reactions and different stories from the characters who were sometimes talkative or surprised, depending on which object visitors showed to them. And so, for example, 
uh, if visitors showed uh, Mary uh, with her embroidery, she would be very uh, talkative and she'll tell you all about her doing her embroidery by the fire. But if they showed uh, Mary with Anne's magazine that pictured an astronaut on the front cover, so Mary would be very scared and by, yeah, she would be scared by this strange creature and she would send uh, visitors away. So hopefully this gives you an idea uh, of how the exhibition worked. Um, and I don't have to go, I don't have time to go through the four arguments now, but I'll discuss how we considered one of them, uh, the value of materiality in our design and show how this played out uh, with visitors in the exhibitions. And so um, academics have criticized the information led approach to exhibition design, where objects are seen as a means to illustrate content rather than uh, functioning as creators uh, of meaning within the displays. And in our design, we've challenged this by considering materiality at the center of our uh, design. And so we use embedded technology for objects to function as tangible keys to unlock content in the exhibition. And so the objects uh, were very tactile, uh, mostly handmade. For example, the embroidery and the knife were handmade by the volunteers. And so visitors walked around the house with the object in their hands. So it was important to think about the tangible qualities of each object very carefully. So for example, uh, the size, the weight, the shape, the texture. And here, um, for example, the train token at the top right of the slides, uh, it was a small object from the museum collection. And so we used um, 3D scanning so we could scale the object up for visitors to be able to hold it in their hands and to feel the enlarged and embossed text on it. And um, so, for example, when visitors who picked Tom's shoe last, uh, one of the augmented objects, he wrote after the visit how he really enjoyed holding the shoe and how he enjoyed feeling the smoothness of the shoe as he walked around the house. And overall, visitors appreciated being able to touch and handle object as it was very evocative and more engaging. So um, we also know from heritage-based theory the potential of touch in museum, especially in, re in relation to provoking emotional engagement with heritage. But this affective dimension of experience has been poorly understood and explored according to um, critical uh, heritage studies. And so house museums uh, in particular have been criticized uh, for losing the sensory qualities. And so when being turned into museum, uh, the house become places that are too systematic and objective. And instead, uh, practitioners are being encouraged to look beyond the cult of objects towards creating an emotional engagement and one that is created through experience. And so we designed for a multisensory and embodied uh, interaction and to create that emotional engagement with the place. We've considered the materiality beyond touch. So the tableau featured, for example, smell, light, uh, audiovisual content and movements. And so characters um, prompted visitors to move around the house and to come back to hear more stories, but also to activate hidden parts in the tableau. So here, one of the visitors came back a second time to Tom's tableau and that prompted the chicken to move, which provoked uh, surprise and rewards. And um, so to, in addition, we also used noises like the sound of the chicken or someone snoring to indicate that characters had left or was busy doing something else. And that invited visitors to move or come back later. And overall, those, those sensory features scaffolded a more personal and emotional experience of the place. And as one visitor uh, observed, uh, not sure what I've learned, but I certainly had an enjoyable and emotional experience. There, the characters definitely triggered memory and ideas. It was a real personal interaction. So uh, house museums are also a very interesting setting to explore the value of materiality, because the whole house is considered as an historic object. So practitioners um, should consider exhibition design in house museum beyond the curation and the display of, of um, individual objects. But they should also design for an experience that is sensitive and particular to the place. 
So in our work, we've looked beyond individual objects and designed the tableau as an ensemble that was bespoke and informed by the material quality of the house. So we designed the tableau as miniature domestic scenes and they were crafted in layer and through the design we were able to highlight significant details and important features of the house that volunteers found meaningful. So for example, uh, we've, um, in one tableau we've engraved, uh, engraved witches marks uh, that, um, so those marks are spiritual marks. They are usually made in the walls or the doors of the house uh, to push the evil spirit away. And so we've relied on the expertise of one volunteer and we used his drawing to inform the design of Tom's tableau. In addition, the characters would also encourage visitors to look inside the tableau, but also around the house for those marks. They sent visitors away to ask other characters about those marks and sometimes even to ask volunteers. And so by considering uh, the whole space as an historic object, we were able to magnify details through our design and to create an emplaced experience. And we observed how visitors followed uh, the suggestion of the characters who pushed them to notice things around the house. And finally, by considering the value of materiality in our design, we were able to design for a seamless experience of technology. One where technology did not distract but enhance the experience of being there. And as one visitor described, the technology is invisible, creating the feeling of history using technology. And so in the paper, we discuss in more detail how the four framing arguments trickle down into the design of the exhibition. And we show how this enhanced the visitor experience. And we also conclude by offering three sensitizing concepts that synthesize our ideas or some of the concepts that bubbled up from our practice. And these embody further reflection, but also design implication for designing interactive exhibition that address critical heritage discourses. So first visitors described how the house, um, how they saw the house from multiple perspective. And so through the eyes of the characters. And this informed the concept of polyvocal narratives. And we discussed implication for design, for example, the importance of envisioning the characters and the tableau as a whole and situated experience rather than uh, isolated entities. And then visitors describe their engagement with the characters as addictive or as if having a conversation with the place. And this informed the concept of dialogical interaction and part of crafting such conversation was to design for both short and long-term engagement. And we give more detail about this in the paper. And finally, visitors described how they became aware of the depth of the house, its many layers, uh, so thinking of the layers of time. And they sh they've um, described how they've gained a much broader understanding of the place through uh, interacting with the tableau. So this informed the last concept where we considered both temporal and spatial dimensions in our design to challenge the linear uh, experience of a traditional um, exhibition format. And so to conclude, we've used the research through design approach to address the theory and practice divide. And we showed that um, how the two can influence each other in a more in a positive way. And we did this in the context of heritage. But we believe that uh, our work can be taken as an example of a more generic uh, issue. So uh, I'd like to thank my co-authors and everyone who contributing to, con contributed to this work, like the volunteers, the Bishop's House and many others. And thank you very much for listening.